Michael Jordan is not only the best basketball player, but he's the most exciting basketball player to ever play. Tatum fires away, pumps it in. 51 for Jason Tatum. The Big 3 NBA Podcast is powered by Prize Picks, the exclusive daily fantasy partner of the CLNS Media Network. Welcome to another edition of the Big 3 NBA Podcast. I'm your host, Seishra Blakely. Today, we've got one of CNLS's finest, Joe <laughs> Sway Pavone. You, What's up, man? What's up, man? I'm not going to tell you about that Nike swish you got on your head, but that's all right. It's all right. Because you, you, you did it Friday night? All right. I appreciate you. you know what? I'm, I'm keeping it going. I'm not, I, I got it out of my system Friday night, but we're we going we gonna to keep it keep it going, keep it moving. Uh, and this it episode friendly, is brought to you by... I appreciate you. Yeah, it is. It is. It is. And as, as much as I got to pay props to you, we also got to make sure we got to pay props to the bill pairs. Uh, so yeah, this absolutely. podcast... This episode is brought to you by Indeed.com, HelloFresh, and PrizePix, the exclusive daily fantasy partner of the CLNS Media Network. Sign up now at prizepix.com slash CLNS and use the code CLNS for a first deposit match of up to $100. Uh, and again, we're just going to jump right into things, Joe. You you alluded to the game on Friday night and um, didn't quite go how we thought it would. Uh, no, it didn't. There was no, there was no Jalen Brown. There was no Derek White, but you had Tatum and you had the rest of the gang, and they built a nice, comfortable lead. Everyone's kind of got their feet, you know, feet up on the desk, kick back, relax, and then next thing you know, the Kings start balling. The Kings start just, you know, basically they got De'Aaron Fox. The Celtics got De'Aaron yeah, Fox because he was scary. basically all that they had going on. But what the hell happened? I mean, how did that a game that the Celtics eventually won? And we'll talk about how they won it. But before that, how did it became more of a game? What, from your perspective, what the hell happened that made this a game that, for long stretches, didn't really seem like it was going to be that tight? Yeah, yeah, man. But you, you said it, man. Darren Fox went off, and, and that's the thing. You know, when when he gets going, it's like everyone gets on the same page. Everyone is out running the floor. Everyone goes to his pace, right? The the Sacramento Kings. I mean, this has happened. A lot throughout the uh, throughout the season, where they just piggyback off of his momentum, and all of a sudden the deficit goes from double digits down to five six. That's exactly what happened against the Celtics. Now, I thought that comeback story w- was over when the Celtics came back strong in the second half, but then came the second surge, you know, against the Celtics' bench. But I like that. I really do, Sherrod. I mean, we talked about it on the Celtics post game show. Like that's great for this second unit for these these bench guys for guys like Sam Hauser and Peyton Pritchard, you know, obviously it's great that they survived it, but I can imagine for Celtics fans, it was a little bit scary, but also a little bit familiar though. I mean, they, they do this sometimes, right? They do this from time to time, even when they have all their guys in there, even when all the starters are, are, are finishing off, you know, the fourth quarter. So yeah, it's a little, uh, again, because it's the second unit, I'm not as concerned, but again, I'm, I'm glad that they were poised. They were ready for that for, you know, they were prepared for that. You know, and I think the Sacramento Kings, we also got to remember, man, they, they have a lot riding on that game, you know, in terms of playoff uh, implications. Everything is really tight in the Western Conference right now. You know, we're down to, what, five games left in the regular season. So, I mean, they had a lot to play for, obviously, and, and they've, they've done this. You know, they're, they're known for, for doing this, for making these, these comebacks. But, yeah, I mean, it wasn't what I expected. Again, that second wave is what scared me, but I'm really glad that Joe Mazzula didn't put his starters in, or at least a couple of guys to, to try to save the game. You know, he trusted his guys, and, and, and rightfully so. I mean, guys like Pritchard and Hauser, who couldn't find a bucket, uh, hit, hit a big one, and, and also they were able to get the second chance point. You know, for 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 Tillman with the uh, with the go ahead with the go ahead bucket at the end, that was good. Sam Hauser had maybe the you know maybe that might be the worst game he's ever had like in his life where oh, he yeah. went Historic. one for eighteen. But the, yeah. to your point though, the one the thing that you know folks in Celtics land are going to remember about that game is him missing a shot or or a shot being missed and him tipping it out to Xavier Tillman who hit the game winner. Uh, right. And and that's right. another guy that again this, the Celtics aren't expecting major things out of him, but it's good for them to see him in that situation and come through and deliver. Um, but as much as the bench got that opportunity to play. And, 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 you know, I thought Joe went a little deeper than I thought he would sooner than I thought he would. Uh, it also was a reminder of what this team looks like when you don't have Jalen Brown and Derek White around. And I know Tatum is their best player. Uh, Porzingis, I think is probably the, the, the legit, a legitimate X factor, but damn, I'm not sure we're giving JB and D white enough props and credit for what yeah. they mean to this team. Cause 
there were multiple stretches where you could see where, damn, if they had Jalen Brown, this would be happening. Or damn, if D. White was on the floor, that would have went down. What's your take on just the value that those guys have to the team? And and are we giving them enough credit or for the value that they bring to this this Celtic squad? I think we are. I think because of what we we've, we've seen this year, we are, especially with Derek White, man. Like he's just really coming to his own, and you know everything that we've heard from what Greg Popovich said about him, just having to you know know that he belongs in the you know not even the NBA, but just in in that tier of just uh, guys that really are really important to a championship caliber team, and that's exactly what happened this year. You know, a big reason why he was able to settle in there with after having last year under his belt, and he just looks a lot more confident. But yeah, you know, I I, I think. With Jalen, you know, having the best season of his career, if you ask me, just in terms of just he just he just looks like he's able to be his self, you know, like he just before he was a bit reserved. And I know you remember those days, right? Sure. I'm not just talking about like when he was a rookie or whatever, but like even years ago, a couple of years ago, I feel like it was sort of like he was still trying to find his 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 own way. And, you know, of course, the contract extension, long term and generational wealth, all that stuff matters. I mean, I mean, it helps, I should say. But it also helps just to know that your organization has a place for you and they see you as a cornerstone. And, and I think that was a big part of it as well. Um, you know, being next to Jason Tatum, I think he sort of uh, he's found his way, you know, and he's found his uh, his mark on this team. So it, what they mean on both ends of the floor, I think it's a big part as well, especially when you look at what happened last night or Friday night, rather, when, you know, the Sacramento Kings didn't have that second uh, that second pressure applied on offense that you, it's really hard to slow down once he gets going. And clearly he's, he's been rolling. If you look at his stats or his numbers, uh, his offense ever since the uh, all-star break. And I, it wouldn't, wouldn't have been any different Friday night. So these guys are tremendous assets to this team. But, you know, when you look at someone like Derek White, maybe a, a key underrated a year ago or, or so going into the postseason. Now I think it's a completely different story. I mean, you got coach Mike Brown talking about him, uh, you know, before that Kings and Celtics game. And he's just like, man, you know, these guys have all stars and then they have Derek White, you know, and I feel like that was his way of saying, like, he's just as valuable and, and rightfully so. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's, there's definitely, I think, more um, awareness of what Derek White can do now, whereas last right. year it really was just right. like, damn, where did that come from? Like, this is the dude that, you know, he, he couldn't even get a D1 offer and now look at him he balling out. Right. Uh, he can but, run the offense. He can defend. He yeah. can, you know, essentially just change the complexion of a game. You know, guys like that are just really valuable to a team that's obviously, you know, trying to win a championship and, and doesn't have to be your second or third option on offense, essentially, you know, it's a yeah. huge asset. It is. And, and it, a huge asset, particularly when you talk about the playoffs, where you're going to need all hands on deck to achieve right. the goal for this team, which is to win a championship. But between now and the duck boat parade, you're going, to, you're going to have to make sure your guys are ready to ball out, and, and particularly going into the playoffs. So with these last four or five remaining games, and I got three buckets I want you to, 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 to carry for me in this one, Joe Swain. Okay. I, I, what do you expect or what do you want to see in these last few remaining games from the starters, from the bench, and from Joe Mazzula? And we'll start with the starters first. What are you hoping to see from them in these last five games? I want to see some rest, Rod. Uh, I mean, look, I'm not saying pull them all, you know what I mean, set them all, but hey, everyone take turns on not on nights off. You know, you guys gonna take a couple of days, you know, you couple guys gonna you know take the night off. All right, me too. You know, like something like that because I love this um, momentum we're seeing from the from uh, Porzingis. You know, I don't want them to slow that down, so I wouldn't like him to just be pulled and just be, you know, you just set him for these next five games. But obviously, get a couple of rest games in there as well, but keep that momentum flowing. I, I think he's. I don't think anyone's having more fun on this team this year than Chris Dasperzingis, man. Like, the guy just hasn't stopped smiling since October. And, you know, with the playoffs coming, he, he feels it. He feels the intensity. He feels the city, you know, the vibe right now, even though he doesn't have a whole lot of playoff experience, obviously, when you look at his track record. So I, I just love that um, momentum he has going on both ends of the floor right now. He's averaging, like, three blocks in his last four games or so. You know, uh, his points are, are up. His, his uh, percentages are, are up. But – you know, to answer your question, Sherrod, just uh, just rest. You know, get these guys rested for sure, and especially guys like you know Jalen Brown, who um, has to kind of deal with a new level of discomfort. I want to say, I don't know. I mean, it's tough to say. And let's be honest; he's not going to be transparent with us, Sherrod. He's never going to go up on that podium and be like, "Hey, man, this this hand's been killing me today." Yeah. <laughs> it's, it, like, it, and look, that's something that I worry about in the playoffs. Not him going up there and saying that, but 
him having that discomfort and then sh it, it, it's showing on the floor, like, you know, so hopefully yeah. that's not the case, but yeah, you know, get these guys some rest and um, make sure that this closest is the best version of themselves <laughs> uh, going into the postseason. That's what's most important. Yeah, for the starters, I, I think it's it's that, that fine line between rest and rhythm that Joe Mazzula has to, I think, really take to heart. And with Porzingis, um, I, I got to be honest, I don't understand why he would not be jumping over the moon with, with jubilation every day. I mean, think about this. You are making max yeah. money as the, at best, third option on your team. And you're coming to a team that was built to win a championship that needed maybe one more stretch big to fill it out, which is exactly what you do. And you don't have the pressure that you had when you were in New York, when you were the face of the franchise, even though you were not ready for that. So not ready right. for that. You go right. to Dallas. He'll tell you himself. He'll tell you yeah. that he wasn't ready. Right. Yeah. 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 And then you, you spent some time in Dallas and that wasn't really a good fit because they wanted you to be that number two guy. And you sort of could do that. But you had a lot of health issues and banged in and out of the lineup. So that didn't work out. And right. then you went to the dumpster fire of dumpster fires in the NBA, the Wizards. And so, yeah, you put up big numbers and you stay Humbled healthy. them real quick, right, Sherrod? Humbled them real, real quick. Like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so then it's just yeah. like, like, look, if you don't want to be that 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 top dog, we just go, you're going to wind up in a crappy situation in Washington. So, you, so yeah. when the Celtics came calling for him, you saw on his representation side of things, they were doing anything and everything to make that happen. It was just like, right. what, Wes, y'all want to do an extension? Okay, we'll do an extension. You need to take a little bit here. Yeah, we go. Whatever we need to do to get out of Washington, let's make this happen. <laughs> And so <laughs> right. Porzingis has every reason to be excited about this because this is the opportunity. I mean, to me, I don't know if there's any player making that kind of money that's in a better situation than Chris Das Porzingis. You are playing number one face of the franchise. You're making face of the franchise money as yeah. that as not the wingman, but the wingman next to the wingman. <laughs> I ain't mad right, at you. Man. I am. I am yeah. not mad, and that's why. That's why, like people, are like I can't believe he's so happy. I'm just like, why the hell? What they gotta complain about? There's literally nothing for that man to complain about. Now, <laughs> yeah, the, for real. And plus, look, the system is designed for him to succeed, right. man. They, they, that's what that was. What was missing from this from this uh, team last year? Whether right. you want to match up, you know, look at the flaws against the Heat, or you know, look at the flaws defensively. Just having that presence. I mean, you 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 see it, you know. This isn't, it's not just his, uh, his his stats on on defense. It's just you you see guys literally you know hesitate in the paint. You know they, they had a double thing like oh shoot here comes Porzingis. You know like it's just that extra pressure that makes the defense all the more uh, devastated when it's when it's at its best. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So he, he's he's been he's been really good. Prize Picks is America's number one sports app with more than three million members. It is the easiest and most exciting way to get out of the action while you watch your favorite sports and players. You just pick more or less on two or more player stats and watch the winnings rolled in. Now get in on the playoff action. Win up to 100 times your money on prize picks as you and the world's best players take the game to a new level during basketball's postseason. If you have the skills, you can turn $10 into $1,000 in just a few taps. Prize picks is really simple to play. You can make a pick and submit an entry in less than 60 seconds. This week on Prize Picks, I'm selecting Jason Tatum to dish out more than five assists and for his teammate Jalen Brown to have more than 22 and a half points. Download the app today and use code CLNS for a first deposit matchup to $100. Pick more, pick less. It's that easy. Prize Picks. Uh, and the bench has had its moments where they've been really good uh, against the Kings. Not so much. Uh, but <laughs> what are you hoping to see from that group going forward, though? Because they got – I mean, there's a number of guys that – I think there's a couple guys that have pretty much solidified them, themselves in the rotation. But there's still, I think, another two or three guys who might be able to sneak in a spot duty here and there. What are you hoping to see out of that second unit uh, these last four or five games? Energy energy man i think that's the best way to put it especially on both ends of the floor and you have the personnel to do that now with guys like hauser horford sort of your anchor there and peyton pritchard man what a i don't want to call it a 180 <laughs> but i mean it's not like he was slacking but he's just taking his game to new heights this this season especially in the last couple of months man he looks so comfortable 
in that, you know, secondary role as the distributor, as a defender, you know, and obviously as a score, you know, and it's not just about the three point shot. Now he's so much more comfortable come, attacking the paint. You know, if guys give him that lane, he's going to take it. He's going to finish, you know, he's going to get to the free throw line. He's going to have a couple of words for you. You know, sometimes if you, if you get in his, get into his personal space too much, he's not, you know what I mean? Like, I just love how his personality this year is just completely. And yeah, the contract extension helped as well. But I also think just getting those reps in and being given that, that opportunity, um, you know, extended opportunities, which wasn't always the case last year, where it sort of felt like if he wasn't giving you a whole lot of offense, he, he would he was he was pulled, you know, like almost right away. So, um, yeah, it just to answer your question, man, constant energy on both ends of the floor, and I'm not not worried about Horford, you know, in that regard. Not worried about Pritchard, honestly. Um, and and Hauser falls in that same category, to be honest with you, man. I, I just the only thing I'm I'm worried about during the playoffs is if like. The offense gets really, really dry. Like, you know, the drought sometimes it happens with these guys. Right. But um, you know, that's why you have the 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 best starting five in, in the in the NBA essentially, you know, with with these guys. So you can mix and match as well. But I think having those three rock solid guys with guys like Cornette who can come in there as well. Um, you know, Tillman, you know, guys are in foul trouble up front that can help you in in and in, in, you know, defending and giving you a little extra effort on the offensive end as, as well but i just think those three guys man that's their that's their role you know bring that constant energy every time they're on the floor yeah with, with pritchard i mean he has done what is a bit atypical uh as far as guys get the money guys start to slack off yeah pritchard, pritchard <laughs> got the money yeah pritchard got the yeah. money and he started balling he was just like oh yeah. I, y'all paying me how much oh i, I gotta make sure that y'all understand that y'all getting y'all y'all gonna get this is a bargain for y'all y'all do realize that exactly. and once i start playing right. y'all gonna realize how big a bargain i am so he's been really good i think about just validating uh the money and validating the opportunity and validating right. the roster upheaval that yeah. brad went through to get him in position i mean sending just, marcus yeah. out sending mark malcolm brogdon out i mean he sent out you know the freaking former defensive player of the year and the sixth man of the year for your ass. I mean, if you don't feel that this team, yeah. this franchise has that confidence in you, I don't know what your problem is. Because they sent out two players who distinguished themselves among the elite of the elite in the NBA, and you play like eight, nine minutes. But they're right. just like, well, we got to figure right. out where to get you more minutes. So I, I think I, I love the fact that Pritchard has not taken, you know, the faith that they have had in him for granted, that he's actually been a baller this year. And he he deserves major props, uh, major props for that. Uh, he's comfortable, and- man. He's relaxed out there, man. That's what I that's what I love about it, because you can just tell. And even in the post-game interview when he's up on the podium he's just like All right, what we got you know like he's answering the questions more thoroughly yeah. now you yeah. know he's giving you more insight a bit more because he's kind of give you the uh, cliche answers a lot those first yeah. couple of years first couple of two three I years just like, you gotta man, fire off like this? seven yeah you gotta fire off like 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 seven questions to get a good two three minute <laughs> conversation see, with this dude see, going he, but not anymore man he figured yeah. the game out he figured the game out yeah. like look i'm yeah. gonna give him a little something 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 and they're going to keep coming back as long as I keep balling it and have a reason to be on this podium. Because that's the thing. You right. got to ball out to be on the podium. Because if, exactly. if that weren't the case, I mean, we'd have yeah. Grant Williams up there every week. If if, if it just whoever you want to give you a good sound <laughs> right. bite. Because uh, he wants have, to talk, right? Exactly. He got no problem talking. Exactly. Right, right. So we, we, I mean, should we love when Grant Williams had a good game. That means, okay, Grant going to talk today. Okay, we got something. We got a reason to talk to him. But the one of the other keys to to uh, to Pritchard's play and to that bench's play is, is just the the roles that Joe Missoula has been putting them in. And obviously, with these last five games, you know you're you're, you're trying to firm up your rotation, figure out who's going to be in, who's going to be out, and just all those l- really minor little detail type things. What are you hoping to see from Joe as a coach? Like, is there something that you haven't seen as much of that you'd like to see uh, down the stretch? Uh, I got a couple things, but I'm curious. What, what are you thinking? Oh man, so this one at the very, very top of the list, and it's just like a gap for every everything else, and that um, plays at the end of the game, like some Facts, trick, my dog, <laughs> right? Like some kind of trickery, something that you you've been saving, but you guys work on damn near almost every single time you guys have practice. You know what I mean? You pick that, you pick the time in practice, just be like, hey, this is from that play real quick. And it's like, coach, you never once even called on this play. You know, hey. Let's get it ready. You know what I mean? So then when that moment comes, we're going to be like, okay, that's what they were. They were waiting for that perfect opportunity. Something like that, you know, because um, the ISO Jason Tatum thing, it's getting a little stale, Sherrod. I don't know about you, man. It's getting a little a stale little for stale? me. 
Dude, I, I, I'm beyond still. I'm, I'm at that point where like this, this has become a a, a scientific experiment in a la moldy, <laughs> like moldy bread. You know, when you when you just keep it's it like your not working, man. Yeah, it, man. It's, it's, yeah, you gotta show me it's something. Do it. something different. Yeah. Right. Right. Hey, if he's going off, if he's doing one of those takeover games, which he's got a, got a few under his belt. Let's be honest. Let's give it to him. A couple of uh, historic or, or career milestone performances throughout his postseason play. I get that. But that's not the case, man. It surprise us every once in a while. Well, you know, something did. involved with Derek White, maybe. You know what I mean? Give me something or uh, Hauser off a of curl or something. Three. I don't know, man. But hopefully that's the case. I would love to see that. Um, in the playoffs. And obviously, it's not just Joe Mazzula. I shouldn't just put that all on him. Like, it's, it's coaching staff as well. Everyone brainstorming, and, and, and hopefully, there's some place safe designed exclusively for the postseason. We'll see. I, yeah, I, I'm with you on that. And, and to, here's my biggest reason for that. Uh, well, actually, a couple of couple reasons. First, you have an incredibly talented squad. Guys yeah. that can do some amazing things. Got and options, to me, when you, yeah, when yeah. you get in that situation where you're looking for one bucket to win, you need to utilize the versatility at, at your disposal. Uh, yeah. If you've got to call an, you know, an inbounds with an ATO play, uh, potentially win a game or force overtime or something like that, it shouldn't be ISO Tatum. That should, I mean, that's to me. <laughs> right. Right. I, I, one of the things about Brad Stevens that I love, and I hate going to the coach comparison thing, but it's it's, it's just yeah. But yeah, yeah, yeah. As soon as you said ATO, though, I was like, oh, I'm with the Brad days. Like Brad, I literally, that's the first thing that popped the Brad mind. kept you on that. your toes because you did not know what he was going to do because you didn't know who yeah, the play man. was going to be designed for. And when I look at Derek White, who makes a lot of fourth quarter clutch shots, when I look at Drew Holiday, when I look at Porzingis, when you start going down to JB. Most of those mm-hmm. guys are better in that moment than Tatum. The, the, the stats don't lie. Tatum has not yeah. been a productive end-of-game performer. And, again, for a guy that has so many positive attributes about him, and that's the one negative, your, your concern is how can we buffer that? How can we make that be not such a problematic thing for him? And to me, the answer is pretty damn simple. Use the fools around him. Derek mm-hmm. White. Brazing is you name it. They've decoy. got some. They've got use some. Decoy. Yeah, yeah, you see them, and, and you know what they and they did that. Yeah. They did that. Uh, I can't remember which game it was a game recently where Tatum did. Uh, I guess he. Oh yeah. Um, Jalen Brown made like a mid range shot, but they used Tatum as a decoy diving to the basket. That defense. They got the double team. Yeah, yeah. yeah they yeah, shifted yeah, just yeah. enough, and and the ball just came out to Jalen Brown. Had a mid range jump shot that he was able to knock down. And I'm thinking, like, yeah. you do. I, I keep telling myself that Joe is going to do those type of things come playoff time. Joe is going to do those. I keep That's telling myself, thinking, and it's, I'm, I'm going to talk it into existence. Is what I'm doing. I'm going to talk it into existence because they have a ridiculous amount of options. I mean, if you go to Milwaukee and they got to and they have to come up with something at the end of the game, it's either Dame. Or Giannis, that's it. You you yep. know, Connaughton's not getting that shot. Uh, nope. You know, uh, you know, my man with the crazy eyes. Uh, you know, uh, he's not getting that shot. Um, those Middleton days are over, man. Middleton those days, he Middleton, used to cook the Celtics. Oh man, man. I mean, you, look, he had the frying pan and the butter just sizzling, waiting for the Celtics <laughs> to jump in because he now, now he's clicking. He, now he's clicking for triple doubles, man. Sherrod, you see that <laughs> the other night, man. man. <laughs> he got mad at he got mad at Doc and Doc's like. That's what you're thinking about right now. This, this is, yeah. and, he, and he still gave it to him. He, he put back into the game and got his rebound or whatever he needed. Like, all right, 10, 10, and 13. You happy exactly. now? Exactly. And it, it's it's uh, it's bad <laughs> in Milwaukee. But but the, the Celtics have so many different options. And I, I just really want Joe, particularly in those moments of crisis when you need a basket, don't just lean on Tatum. Uh, yeah, and, and, I, and I think, you know, Joe, he's got to get past that. Cause, and and the, here's the thing about it. It's the type of thing that when let's say they need a bucket and let's say they use Tatum as a decoy where they similar to what they did uh, earlier this season and they're going to game and people ask him, why didn't you go to Tatum? To me, the answer is simple because we wanted to make the best basketball decision. And in that moment, using him as a decoy was the best basketball decision because we knew that would create a matchup, a more favorable matchup. At another yeah. position, it's really not that complicated. Uh, it really right. isn't. And I, I wish, I really, really wish Joe would look to that. Uh, and, more and, than and yeah, and it's funny, Sherrod, because the way you just worded that, man, that that sounded like a Joe quote. You know what I mean? Like I, it sounds I, I like the that. Joke I, channel, you would do. I, cha- I channel my inner Joe Mazzullo on that one. I channel. <laughs> 
<laughs> like, like if someone were to question him about, let's say, I don't know, Derek White in the corner three, I don't know, let's just say hypothetically, and, and he misses, right? Mm-hmm. That would be his answer for, well, why not put Tatum in that situation? Why not, you know what I mean? Like, I feel like that's the kind of, you know, that's the thought process right there. But it hasn't been the case. It's just been, hey, throw it to Tatum. Let's see what he can do. You know, I just, or, yeah, or, I or no time out at all. No time out at all, right? That's been the thing. And, and, and look, that we're sort of – that's kind of in the rear view at this point, rear view mirror, at this, you know, the whole timeout thing. Uh, that's kind of, of of last year. Right. Um, you notice how after this, the Kings game, though, I feel like he was a little, like, he got in front of it when he was just like, you know, like Pritchard got the ball, and I didn't think it was appropriate. We're like, it's all right, Coach, we're going to yeah. ask you about that. You good? Yeah. You good? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> but, yeah, let's see if he can – Let's see if these guys are ready for it, obviously, um, because I don't want this to be like a thing that they just started practicing, you know, a right. week or so. You know, again, I hope right. this is something that they've been working on, um, you know, throughout the course of the regular season. Yeah. So. And, the, the, and the thing for them is the way the rest of the Eastern Conference is shaking up outside of themselves, they literally have no idea who the hell they're going to play. Um, yeah. When you start looking at teams two through ten and, and two being Milwaukee. The way this season is shaping up, the way things are looking on the stretch, it's not a major stretch to see Milwaukee go from two to play in status, where they play like there's a seven for eight team in the East. And conversely, it's not a, it wouldn't be a shock if a team like, you know, right now, Philadelphia, which is kind of, you know, they got Joel and they got Joel back. They could easily bump up to like, like two or three potentially uh, if they get it rolling. So again, I got, Looking at all these teams and looking at where they are now, I got a, I got a few teams in mind that I think will give the Celtics trouble. I don't think any of the teams will beat them in the best of seven, but there's some teams that will make them work harder in the first round than I think they would want to. I got my teams. Who are your teams? So the you big, better the not say two or nine. Or... Yeah, it, it just, I just need two or three teams. I don't need that damn seven teams. Don't don't be that uh, dude. <laughs> no, no, I won't do that. I, I can't stand people to do that. Um, for the, they're all really good teams. Hardest, I can't pick one. Stop. Yeah, I don't know, man. They they just give you three. It's like yo, pick one. Um, man, I'm still gonna go with the Miami Heat, man. Honestly, um, I, I just think that would be like, yeah, man. Like Damn. I don't know, like I, I mean the Bucks. I mean the Bucks are obviously like one of those teams as well, but I I don't think it's gonna happen. I mean, like, I mean the absolute hardest team though, I, like. I just think in terms of if you if you were to com- if you were to max out like the, the likelihood, you know what I mean, and like in terms of like if you look at the percentages, or whatever Vegas got going right now, the Heat is still that team. But if you if you look at like you said, anything could happen. Um, probably the Bucks if that were to happen, but I don't I don't know, man. All right, well, Joe Sway, you got the Miami Heat as a team that you're worried about. I get that. They've had the Celtics number. They've given the Celtics some problems in the past. Okay, I get it. I get it. They, they got Jimmy that momentum, Butler, man. I yeah. get it, but listen, the the, t- the team that I am worried about if I'm the Celtics seeing them in the first round is the Indiana Pacers, and here's why. First of all, they got a hell of a coach, Rick Carlisle, first and foremost, one of the best coaches in the game. Second, this is the team that, I got to be honest, of those teams in that bottom third of the, of the East, they seem to ha- have a little bit of, I don't know, uh, little brother syndrome when it comes to the yeah, Celtics. Yeah. Because Neesmith and, and the rest of them looking at it like, look, y'all may be nice, but, you know, we 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 think we're pretty good, too. And they play with a yeah. different kind of, like, chip on their shoulder than a lot of they other teams hyped. do. Yeah. Hyped, yeah. And number three, this is a team that has waxed you before. They know they can beat you. They So, so they're coming into this thing completely ignorant of the fact that we should be losing this series in five games. They're coming in thinking that, you know what? All we got to do is get one on the road and then maybe get one or two at the crib and then pressure. The pressure's on them. Right. We, yeah. We'll just keep playing freely. And to me, those are the teams that are most dangerous, the teams that have that are good enough to beat you if you let your guard down and smart enough to not get comfortable when they're ahead. Like Indiana mm-hmm. is – and Rick Carlisle will not let that happen. So to me, that's one team I don't want to see in the first round. Uh, because I think that they can make your life extremely miserable. I don't think they'll win the series, but I could easily see that being a six or seven game series. Uh, and you have to exert way more energy and focus to put them away than you would if, let's say, you played my Heat. Because here's the thing about the Heat. I think if that's their first round opponent, I'm going to go out on a limb and say they'll sweep them. And I'm going to tell you why. Wow. I'm going to tell you why. I'm going to really? tell you why. Because they will go into that series with – a level of focus that we ain't seen. 
They're not yes. going into that series looking to win. Yeah. They're going into that. That's look, true. they they look at the Miami Heat as a really full size net, and they're taking a sledgehammer times two at them. They're not just going to try to beat them and get them. No, they're going to try to crush them into the ground. They may average more margin. The margin of victory might be in twenty points per game. Neighborhood. They're they they are going to try to destroy that team. Really, Is they it, will try to do. They will try to put. They will try to bury them in a way that we have not seen them try to bury anyone. And they'll they'll do it. We're just playing basketball. It was never personal. We that was just a tip. Oh, it's absolutely <laughs> yeah, personal. It's like, it looks personal. Though. It's yeah. going to be per- <laughs> so. Miami is the one team I'm not worried about, and in, in, in part because of that, but also Miami's just not as good this year. I mean, before they had, they had, yeah, I thought a, a decent amount of solid players, but not spectacular. But when you get past Jimmy Butler, T. Rose, my dude, uh, Tyler Hero, who ain't defending nobody, never has, never will. <laughs> I'm not, wor- I'm not worried about that team. And and then when um yeah. when my man tried to get into it with Jalen Brown, uh, Robinson, Duncan Robinson tried to get into it with Jalen, uh, you know, last time. Y- you better believe Jalen. He ain't gonna say nothing about it now. But Jalen yeah, gonna remember. Gonna that. remember. Yeah, Jalen will sure. put him. Jalen will be looking to put him in a spin cycle and on a poster. Um, I mean, I just think it it would be like a six or seven game series. That's the thing. Again, I don't think it would be the Miami Heat could beat the Celtics, and if it did happen, that would be tragic. I honestly, I don't think I don't think you could beat him in six. I, mean, I don't think it would go six. You don't think it would go six? I mean, I just think it's the Miami Heat. Are one of those teams where it, they're they're the Celtics. They're way more dangerous in a first round matchup than than later down the road. Like down the road, the Celtics would be locked in. I, I think it would be. A much favorable series for the Celtics, if that's the case. But yeah, they're gonna try to ride the wave. I mean, what are they six or four in the last ten? You know, and the Pacers, mm-hmm. man, I, I hear you. I hear you, especially with the offense. And you know, they when they lost um, uh, Matherin, you know, I felt like yeah. they were gonna drop off of it. But man, they got they got guys stepping up. You know, two way players or you know, uh, what was this guy? Uh, rookie rookie mm-hmm. guys. You know, guys that you know have, have just stepped up big. You know, so yeah, I mean the. The Pacers, they, you're right, though. They do have, like, a little chip on their shoulder when they play the Celtics, man. Maybe it's the Neesmith thing and, you know, what happened with the in-season tournament. If you're the Celtics, man, you should take that personally, honestly. But I just wonder if um, they can defend, you know, as yeah. well well enough to slow down the Celtics. That's my only thing. But in terms of scoring, no question. I mean, they're the, they're, they're the top team for a reason, you know, in terms of leading the, the, the league and scoring. Celtics are right there, you know, breathing down their necks. But um, obviously they can they can keep up in terms of scoring with the Celtics, man. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah. That'd be, and, that'd be a great matchup, man. First round matchup. It yeah. would be one of the things I, I wanted. Let me, to let me ask you this real quick, though, Sherrod. I mean, we Sorry. talked about this a little bit uh, Friday night on, on the Southern Post Game Show, but um, when guys like Tyrese Halliburton, for example, right, like that's another guy I would. He gets going, and we saw that against the Celtics earlier this season. I, and again, problem? this is sort of like this thing I've been talking about. Uh, of late with I just feel like the shift of your guards you know once they get going and obviously the other other guys are involved as well the three-point shots flowing the transition offense you know Celtics can't can't slow can't stop the bleeding or whatever is that something that we should worry about with the Celtics you know is that a, is that one of the keys to being the Celtics where you need one of those uh, top tier guards scoring guards like Halliburton you know to get it done you think that's I, something, I think- something to it it's, there's something to that, but I, th- I think the Celtics counter to that, and I think this is where I think Joe Mazzulla is going to make the kind of adjustments that are going to be like, oh, wow, that was a nice adjustment. I think you'll see Jalen Brown on, on a guy like Halliburton. Uh, okay. I think you'll see Good. you'll see some Drew Holiday, obviously, and you'll see some Derek White. But I think you're going to see uh, – I think you'll see JB on him a good bit because JB has the athleticism and can deal with, I think, those shifty guards a little bit better because he's longer yeah. and he's thicker. Yeah. And so – and he hasn't lost a step. And Drew has. I mean, Drew's still a really good defender, but he's lost a step, which to right. me, at his age, playing the way that he does and as, as long as he's played, it's absolutely inevitable that he will have lost a step at this point. But he's still right. a really, really good defender. But I, I think against a team like Indiana, I would want to see Jalen Brown on – Halliburton a little bit more than the normal, just because I think that gives you the best chance to neutralize him. You're not going to shut him down because he's too good for that. Right. But right. you can neutralize his impact to some degree, making you know those, those floaters that he likes to shoot more contested, not allowing him to get to his spots where he can just raise up on you, and respecting his three point shot. Um, yeah. that was something yeah. I didn't think the Celtics sure. really did as good a job with. Uh, respecting his three point shot. Yeah. Well, speaking of shot, yeah. 
that's the yeah. thing, man. Oh, I was gonna say somebody along those lines as well. The Damian Lillards and you know, even the Tyrese Maxis. I mean, these guys are coming, you know. What I mean, there's a lot of these top tier guards in the Eastern Conference. I would throw Jalen Brunson in there, but I don't know, man, with the Knicks, with the news coming out of New York with Julius Randle and all that. But yeah. hey, you never know. I, I'm just saying that there's guys like that that'll be standing in the Celtics' way. So I, I wonder how they respond to that. Yeah, and I, but I think that because the Celtics have so many different types of defenders on the backcourt and on the wing positions, they can they can figure out a way. I think over the course of a seven game series, how to neutralize certain guys. Um, yeah. You know, and, and and you know, one guy we're not going to ever talk about him as an elite defender, but Sam Hauser does a pretty damn good job of staying between the basket and the guy he's guarding. And yeah. when you get to the playoffs, that's half the battle. I mean, mm-hmm. you don't want guys if if guys are going to take a lot of shots, take them over having to shoot over a six four six five guy who's not giving them the space they want um right. house is pretty good about closing in or, or closing out i should say and contesting shots and not letting guys get by him uh and you, people say well what about De'Aaron fox he got by him i'm, I'm like De'Aaron fox get past damn everyone <laughs> i mean yeah I mean, that's what he, that's tier. what he do i mean yeah. <laughs> that's what yeah. he do yeah, but um, shout out to Pritchard though. He got he got he beat him to the spot, so to speak. You know what I mean? I'm not saying he blocked it or whatever, but he was there for the yeah. potential game winner. So that was yeah. that was a good good That spot. was good to see. That was good to see. Yeah. And, and 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 just the way the bench was able to deliver in that moment. I mean, they you know, right. Hauser came up with the tip out to Xavier for the for the game winning shot, and then they you know, good contest on the other end of the floor in the last few, you know, few seconds. Cause they had Sacramento had a couple of really better than average looks. Uh, they weren't yeah, wide open, yeah. but they were pretty damn good looks in that situation. Uh, right. Before we go out, just I, I wanted to talk about, uh, you know, one of my good friends. Uh, I mean, and and I, I do consider he's one of the few players that I would actually consider a friend. Uh, Chauncey oh, Billups. I think, I think I know. Oh. Yeah, there you go. When you said the segue earlier with Mr. Big Shaz. Yeah, yes, I've seen that one. the Hall right, of right. Famer. The Hall of yes. Famer. Yes, yes. Give I, him I his can flowers, finally, man. I can finally Congrats. say that. But here's, here's the Johnson. thing, I, you know, I, I'm, I, you know, having covered Detroit Pistons when Chauncey was there, I, I got to see his evolution and growth into being, you know, one of the best players of that generation. Uh, and, oh, you know, it was an underrated defender to me. He the way that we talk about Sam Hauser, as far as like keeping guys in front of you and contesting shots, that's kind of what Chauncey did. Um, I, I mean, I'll never forget when Chauncey made his first all NBA defensive team and I called him up and he thought I was bullshitting. He was like, "Come on, man! What you what you what are you talking about?" He's like, like, "That's not, not funny." He was like, "That's not funny. <laughs> this is a joke." And, then, and so I had to have the PR guy call him and say, "You you tell Sean that he made all of the defense." And so we get this damn interview. That's so funny. Away. But but the, the thing the thing that you know when I look at his growth and evolution and just look at the accolades that he's racked up, um, I find it interesting that this comes at a time when one of another former Celtic, Rajon Rondo, announces mm-hmm. his retirement. And it gets me to thinking, a lot of people thinking about Rondo's chances of getting into the Hall of Fame. Um, when you see a guy like Chauncey go in and you look at his body of work, which isn't all that different than Rondo's, um, are you encouraged that Rondo will get in or are you not? I'm encouraged. I am. Well, for a couple of reasons. Um, the numbers, or a few reasons, I should say, the championships, I think the second one yeah. um, really helps his case. It does. And and the last thing is, I would say, is the influence. I mean, like he's sort of like he's sort of like the last of a dying breed, you know. And speaking to someone who who, who watched a generation of, of of past first point guards, you know, and, and I feel like Rondo was kind of like one of those uh, like last of those uh, of, that, of those prototypes, if you will, right? Yeah, he'll get his buckets as well, you know. But he was always, hey, I got to make sure everyone else is good, and then I get mine. And that was always the case, even throughout his prime years. So. Um, with Billups, is interesting because I feel like he was more of the score first point guard. You know what I mean? Sort of, I don't want to say started that evolution of what we're seeing now, but it was kind of like, oh, wait, well, this guy can get buckets as well. You know, it's not always about oh, setting up your guys. You know, obviously, that's a big part of it. You're running the offense as well, making sure everyone else is on the same page. But hey, if you're cooking, keep going. You know what I mean? So I, I think they're, um, those are really good examples of two guys that, um, obviously, in my opinion, I should maybe just say it, obviously because maybe people don't agree with it. Deserve um, the, the the Hall of Fame for sure, and, and I just think that those are the reasons, and especially with Rondo. I think the second champ- check and ch- the second championship with the Lakers, I think um, helped as well. But I just think when you see when we're this many years removed from what the NBA used to be, or at least uh, before this the the uh, 
surge and the, the surge of all these score first point guards, you know, the top tier, some of the elite greatest of all time um, and the, you know, the, the Steph Curry's and the Lillers and all that. I think you look back to someone like Rondo and say, man, like we might not see someone like that for a while. I'm not going to say ever again, but it's just nowadays it's, it's secondary for point guards. And, you know, you see so many great point guards in the league, good point guards in the league, you know, it's getting crowded. You know, it's really hard for point guards to kind of stick around the NBA, you know, because there's always a new wave of them. And, and I, I just think a lot of those guys, it's just, that's just not the priority. You know, you want to make yourself more valuable in offense uh, as being as the three point shooter and all around scorer. And I just think someone like Rondo, man, he had the complete, uh, the complete package in terms of what a guard is supposed to do for you. So yeah, man, get him, get him and get him in there. You know, I would love to see Rondo in there for sure. The thing about Rondo that uh, it's it's always going to be a, a separator for me from, from him and a lot of other point guards is not only did he elevate his play in the postseason, he elevated his play oh, in the man. postseason by playing with not one, not two, but three other Hall of Famers. And yeah. he was better than them in a what? number of major high impact, everything chips all in type of games. Yeah, and to man. me, when you when that that doesn't that's not when it becomes something that isn't just something that happens every now and then it becomes a habit it becomes something that is an expectation of right. you I mean I mean right. playoff Rondo before you know when we get to this point in the season and when he played we're starting to talk about oh yeah the postseason you know what that means playoff Rondo you know what time it is exactly yeah, man. and to, yeah. for a player of that that character to have that be part of who they are playing with the Kevin Garnett, Paul Pierce, and Ray Allen's of the world, and you outplay them in those major games. And they and the thing about it, they expect that of you. And they yeah, are man. encouraging you. They are supporting you to be that dude in that moment. And yep. to me, as, as much as I love Chauncey Billups, to me, I have an easier time seeing Rondo in the Hall of Fame than I did Chauncey. And I and really? I, I I felt Chauncey would hopefully get in at some point, but I wasn't as I really wasn't confident. But Rondo way more confident that he'll get in, uh, because yeah. he had a different kind of impact. Uh, it had a and it was unique compared to almost anyone else in the game. And yet, when the game mattered absolutely most, he could play your game and be better than you. Like if you yeah, want man. a point guard who can score, can rebound, and can drop dimes, Rondo can do that in the playoffs. He actually he televised it? Rondo. Yeah, yeah man. He was yeah. about that life. He was, he was it wasn't just was. like, you know, 12, 13, and 10. No, no, no. We're talking like 19 points, 14 rebounds, 17 assists. Like that was like, I'm exactly. telling you, go, go back and guy the kids out there who weren't, you know, old enough to to witness it. Go the basketball reference to do your thing. You know, look at this prime years, man. Some of these games were outrageous, and watching on you know prime time Sunday matinee game, just cooking. cooking and the dudes, and the, right? And the dude that don't shoot threes, all of a sudden in the playoffs can go three for five. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. He heard what you said a few days ago. He was exactly. to go off real quick. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, so like, yeah, that no, was no, man. Yeah, man, no. I watched the I watched the matinee. I think it was against like the Pistons or whatever. It wasn't actually televised or whatever, but he just man, he messed around and and, and, and got like 21, 22 assists. It was incredible. And I'm looking at the scoreboard being like, he has nine in the you know second quarter, or he's got fifteen. Like he just just a, a magician out there, man. Honestly, and, and you know what else too, man. The closest thing to a player coach I've seen, honestly. Mm -hmm. Like, remember the bubble in the Lakers? My man had the clipboard out. Like, listen, this is what we're going to do. Hey, LeBron, hey, hey, I'm talking to you, man. I know. Oh, hey, get over what happened back there. We're doing this now. And there, was, there wasn't a budge. You know what I mean? It was like, you know what? This guy's a champion. He's a veteran. I trust him. You know, everyone, uh, he, had, he had everyone's attention, man. That was the kind of guy he was. Kind of Rondo player. is going to be a great coach when he decides he wants to be a coach. Um, oh, he's going to be a great definitely. one. And and I I... I feel pity for whoever his point guard is because you are going to catch hell um, because, oh, yeah. Rondo, because he knows that position better than you will ever know it. And he will let you know yep. this. And if you can't at least be somewhat functional in what he's looking to do, he's going to keep looking and searching to find someone who's, who can. Oh, and yeah. if he, and if he gets into coaching now, when he's still relatively young, not only can he talk to you about what he's looking for, he can go out there and bust your ass in practice. Cause Rondo can still. At you got time. Straight, He's still he still got, got he still got some of the tank where he can literally get on the floor and just like 
not just tell you what he's looking to do, but actually show what you what it looks like. And if you, no, yeah. you know, if you catch a little attitude, Rondo, he can go Jimmy Butler on you. Like Jimmy Butler did the Minnesota Timberwolves, <laughs> oh, yeah, sure. where he just basically said, look, give me the worst of the lot, bring him on my team, and we're going to whip you starters right now. Rondo could be that guy. Um, Absolutely, so man. I'm, I'm excited. He could play, overseas. play yeah. overseas if he wanted to, but he's just having a great time with his kids, man. man. Like, you can Rondo, just tell yeah. him. He's got one. He's coaching one up right now, you know, his own offspring. And yep. he's just he's just enjoying retirement, man. So congrats yeah. to Rondo, man. Yeah. Congrats I mean, Rondo. Rondo right now could go over to, like, the Chinese Basketball Association and get you 25, 25, and 25, damn near. He can get, and, and get a bag, too, yeah, guys. Get really. you, exactly. can, you get money now. There. Exactly. Yeah. Because they're gonna be, cause they, be, they will sell us, promote as two-time NBA champion with John Rondo, you know. And so it ain't about And they remember. Life. They'll pull up. They'll be like, oh, Rondo's here now? All right. Season tickets. And the things, <laughs> and the thing, right, and the things that he does as far as his passing, they're gonna love that stuff. They would love oh, that man, stuff. Yeah, so, yeah. Um, but so I'm, 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 he's, a show, I'm, he's a showsman. He puts on a show, man, for real. Yeah. But he yeah. seems to have found peace with, with where he's at right now, and and, and coaching his kids, his, you know, his, his kids is important to him. I know. Um, he's definitely a guy that I, I, I fully expect to see in the Hall of Fame. Maybe not first time eligibility he'll get in, but he will get in um, eventually. eventually. Yeah. Um, no, yeah. there's no doubt in my mind about that. Um. Well, that's it for this episode of the Big Three NBA Podcast. Your host, Cesar you Rodney, right. and my fun, man, man, Joe Sway. From over. Joe Sway, where can they find your content out there, brother? Oh, man, check me out on Twitter, at Joe uh, underscore Sway. I uh, can't wait for the playoffs, you know, all that ramping up as well. Of course, got plenty of coverage. Um, CLNSmedia.com. Uh, follow CLNS um, on YouTube, at Celtic CLNS as well on YouTube. Um, yeah, man, I got a lot of fun stuff coming up. Cedric Maxwell Podcast. Um, couple of couple of special guests coming up, man. We'll have some fun for sure. But yeah, follow um the Cedric Maxwell podcast wherever you listen to your 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 favorite podcast. You know, we got you covered for sure, man. Absolutely, absolutely. And again, this this episode of the NBA or the Big Three NBA podcast is available all your down uh for download all your podcasting apps. And one more shout out to our exclusive daily fantasy partner. Prize picks. Yes, uh, sir. Uh, Remember, sign up now at prizepicks.com slash CLNS and use yeah. the code CLNS for a first deposit match of up to $100. I got a couple of little something, something riding on our, our good friend with the Los Angeles Lakers. Uh, here, uh, what's my man name? Um, Which one? I always, I always, Rui. I got Rui. Uh, he's been putting up some oh, numbers. I got okay, Rui. Okay. And yo, also- that's my dude, yo. Hakimura, yo, I used to tell Bobby, I'm like, yo, man, one of these guys, you know what I mean? Like, he's got a role here. I mean, he's he didn't been- quite pan out the way I wanted him to with the Lakers, but he's got a role. He's got a role. He's like, been like- balling lately. And 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 the line yeah. right now is a 19 and a half uh, combination of points, rebounds, and assists. I'm going to take the more. Uh, and I also got my guy Clint Capella. They've got him now for 11 and a half rebound assist combo. I'm taking more than that because he's going to give me dead 12 rebounds oh, alone. Yeah. So, he's, so he's, I, he's I feel I feel very good about my prize picks uh, for today. Uh, I'm feeling really good about those two. So anyway, uh, Joe Sway, as always, a pleasure, my friend. Yes, sir. And this you is know. the Big Three NBA Podcast. Thanks for tuning in. Take care, folks.